So, it was December 8th when I decided to immerse myself in Outlast lore, and after the release of the Outlast Trials beta, I finally remember why I decided to dedicate hours upon hours to this franchise. It just looks so fucking good! I did have my reservations about the beta version of the game after watching some of the trailer glitches Red Burrows released, but I'm happy to announce those little smudges have been paved over and smelted out. Something that surprised me more than anything else was the heavy focus on the main story of the trials instead of the usual slow, horror-inducing tension from the previous games. If I were to compare Outlast Trials to any existing game, I would have to say Black Ops 3 Zombies. Now I know what you're thinking. How could a first-person shooter from 2015 even come close to a survival horror game which involves precision and stealth? And my answer to that is, because it just does. I don't really want to get too into it right now because I want to save these kinds of topics for future analysis videos, but as it can clearly be seen when a mission is being started and once a mission has been finished, the completion menu looks very reminiscent of the Black Ops 3 completion menu. That's not even mentioning the multiplayer function, but as I said, I'm not going to get into this fully. In my opinion, the change from focusing on the tension and horror of the game to a more story-based focus is something that I can really appreciate and commend. I already know this is not going to be a popular opinion amongst the Outlast fandom, but as somebody that loves to deep search into games, but particularly this franchise, it's very useful. When I was creating my other Outlast related content, I always had to use the fan wiki or look specifically at the comic books in order to make some type of theory or conclusion about the Outlast lore. However, when it comes to the Outlast Trials in-universe story, it only comes down to intuition when trying to figure out the specific things about Murkoff. I can't believe I'm saying this, but in the beta you can literally pick up notes which are jam-packed with information and references to the original games. Phenomenal for me, but I would imagine it's a little irritating for people that like to take their time when it comes to finding information. I don't know, something about the gratification of doing hard work. Although I can't say I don't feel bad, because finding these people that thrive on doing hard work is a rarity nowadays. When it comes down to the collective view of the whole of the Outlast fandom, Outlast has completely metamorphosed into what some would call a butterfly, if you will. Its previous identity has been completely stripped away, yet at the same time, the past, or should I say the future, matters greatly. It's sort of like the God of War games. I believe there's going to be some people that are going to have gripes with a new look, the new mechanics, the new way of doing things, but that's not a bad thing. In fact, I would say it makes the entire experience of Outlast better. As a collective, we are going to experience the old games through a new lens. Everything evolves, everything has to change in order to keep things interesting. That's just how life goes. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the opening gameplay. However, I want all of you to keep in mind that this is not a deep search video. This video is quite literally, as specified in the title, my first impression of the game. Deep search videos will come soon, however. The game opens with Master Splinter looking at us through a glass jar, but have no fear, he's only after the drugs at the bottom. I assume the green ooze wasn't enough for him this time around. The camera starts to move, and we are presented with old news articles which are about brainwashing, artists, and fighting communism. Nothing too out of the ordinary for the 1950s, however there is one advertisement that flies away next to a homeless man. Are you lost? Lonely? Poor? Confused? We want you. Let the miracles of science give you purpose. The world owes you everything, men and women of any race, religion, class, or political persuasion. Stop by one of our convenient volunteer centers before the opportunity is gone forever. Murkoff Corp. Charitable Outreach. The homeless man looks at the flyer intently, but then we transition into some type of vehicle which is presumably transporting us to one of these supposed charitable outreaches. There is a bag over our head. One of the volunteers stands up in protest, exclaiming, I'm not supposed to be here. But one of these security guards is not having it and decides to play whack-a-mole with said volunteer. After the gaming sesh, we enter the Murkoff Sinyala facility where one of the scientists hooks us up with some LSD directly in our face. After that, another scientist finishes up a small project and approaches. The two of them decide we need some new prescription glasses and bolt on some night vision goggles. Something I would like to point out is I totally predicted the ability to customize a character. On June 7th, I made a video describing how customizable characters would play a big part in the Outlast Trials. Some called me crazy, but apparently, I'm a genius. We snap back to reality on the blood-soaked floor with our knees weak and arms heavy, stumbling all over the place like we just had some Henny. After walking around for a bit, we approach a large building that looks like an old-fashioned courthouse or a museum. We enter, and for some reason crouch on the floor where we can see the newly installed flickering walls. Perhaps we wanted to see how well the construction team did on their installation. Always love that feature in beta games. We walk into a room titled Birth and pull down a lever, symbolizing our free will to abandon it. The second room we walk into symbolizes childhood, where the character has the same option to abandon it. After pulling the lever, one of the gates open, where we find a helpful person who gives us their night vision goggle battery. Thank you, my dear. 
After wandering around for a bit, we find the third room, which represents God, or should I say, discipline slash morality. We pull the lever and continue. After busting down a barricade like the Kool-Aid man, Oh yeah! A naked grandma pins us down and starts to beat the living shit out of us! But we're fine. We're fine. It's time for the fourth room, and already there's something quite different. In the distance, we hear lonesome singing, admittedly beautiful, yet at the same time, out of place. The tension builds as we walk down a dark hall. We open the huge theater doors to reveal at least 20 children-like mannequins turning their heads, staring at us in unison. We slowly approach the red curtains. A green apple appears between the two curtain halves. We grab the apple and just like what our parents warned us about when we were kids, a heavy built woman grabs our wrist and drills into it with her hand puppet. Oh my god! I would like to point out that the scream, or should I say whimper, from the main character sounds awfully just like Miles Upshur. The assets were probably reused or the same voice actor was hired, either or. We walk through one of the doors and stumble across another dead body. Thanks, buddy. We come across the fifth lever, which represents love. We pull it and abandon it. We make our way to what appears to be the end of the house of horrors we submitted ourselves into, but it's a trap. After watching Mother Gooseberry kill and grind up a volunteer, the second to last task is to destroy your public records. We make our way to the sixth room, which houses the sixth lever. By pulling the lever, we have to carry the box filled with our public records to the grinding mechanism. We toss it in. The last task is to destroy your private life. We make our way to the seventh and final room. The lever is pulled and we grab our private records. We walk into the grinding mechanism and toss the box in. It appears that we are done, but out of nowhere Mother Gooseberry blocks our path and chases us down. She gets juked like a basketball player that lost his flair and we're finally able to leave that section of the facility. After watching some TV, you make your way to the sleep room. Now, this is a lot to unpack. Admittedly, I've already watched this section a multitude of times. The first time around, I wasn't too impressed. The opening with the flyers and then the transition into the asylum was a bit too fast paced for me. I would have loved to have seen some more detail in the background of these characters we play as. I do acknowledge that since Trials has a customizable character function, it would have been somewhat unintelligible to set up a character at the beginning that could easily be changed by the player's preference for their character. For example, imagine if Skyrim had an opening that gave more backstory to the main character. Sure, that could be interesting and give analyzers more information to work with, but at the same time if that happened it would have defeated the entire purpose of the story. In Skyrim, the character is a nobody, a blank slate if you will. Adding needless backstory to a character in order to fluff them up or attempting to make them more interesting for the sake of being interesting could be detrimental to the you can be whoever you want mentality Bethesda had. The character is a mannequin, meant to be given a personality by the player. If a game developer gives a blank canvas personality then you can only follow them on their journey. The player is pretty much a tourist in somebody else's world. This is not a problem for regular games, but when it comes to something like Skyrim, it is detrimental. However, Outlast Trials is different. Although you do have the option to make a customizable character, I believe there should be an overall main character instead of just random people. Yes, having a multitude of random people can induce fear by making the player believe this could happen to anybody, yet at the same time, the concept gives me the feeling that there will be nobody who survives the trials in the end. Basically, everybody is doomed and the only reason this game exists is to provide more information about the Murkoff Corporation. Trust me, I love the information that I'm learning, but there needs to be more of a bigger purpose. In the Outlast timeline, present day, Blake Lingerman has been shipped to a black facility, Elridge if I remember correctly. Perhaps the entire purpose of Outlast Trials is to prepare us for Murkoff's black facilities. It's sort of like, this is what happened then, and this is what's going to happen now when Outlast 3 is released. Maybe that's the bigger picture I'm looking for, or it's nonsensical rambling by me. Anyway, I just wish there was more information about these individuals. We already know the majority of them are homeless, or at the very least enduring hard times, but I wish there was more. To be more specific, I wish there was more information about the public perception of Murkoff at the time. How was it perceived by the public? Did the public even know the corporation existed? Was Murkoff a classified company that only made its name public in 2009 when they purchased Mount Massive Asylum? There are just too many questions I have that I wish were answered. Even if the information was microscopic, that would be better than nothing. But no, all we got was a regular opening to what Murkoff is doing, luring primarily homeless people to their facilities for MK Ultra experimentation. I don't know, perhaps my views would change in time, maybe when the full game comes out. I just hope there's a character with a pre-established background to make him or herself known so we can root for them against Murkoff. As for the gameplay itself, I honestly really like it. There are a few things I don't like, which will most likely be fixed in the alpha, but overall not bad. First person character movements are definitely way smoother than how they were in 2013 and in 2017 feels more realistic and gives the character we play more legitimacy. I also would like to point out how much I love the stamina cooldown. This function by itself makes the game a lot scarier than I was expecting. Not only do you have to run and hide from other patients, but you have to be smart about how fast you go or how slow you go. 
I can already imagine. When I play this game, I'm going to be confronted with the cooldown and I'll be trying to sprint away. However, since I won't be able to, I'll definitely be freaking out a little bit. Something I don't really like too much is the fact of health regenerating naturally. Since there is bottled medication to heal oneself, I don't believe it's necessary for a character to heal over time. It makes the game have less risk. Let's say a character picked up a piece of metal that shocked them and knocked down two force of their health. All the player would have to do is hide somewhere and their health would fully regenerate back within two minutes. Where's the fun in that? Maybe if you change the difficulty, this feature will go away, but if it doesn't, then that will be extremely disappointing. How I see it is, red barrels undermining gamers' abilities to survive. There's also another point that relates to this. Since Trials is multiplayer, will other gamers be able to change the difficulty independently from one another? At the moment, I don't see how this will be detrimental, but there are possibilities of this slowing down other players who are more skilled. Now, I'm not a master at sound design, but I do have two gripes with the sound design in this beta. When Mother Gooseberry throws a volunteer into the grinder, I only hear the usual blood and guts squish, which is most likely just an orange being ripped apart or something. However, since this volunteer's entire body is being ground up slowly, I sort of expect to hear bones cracking, which can be very easily made by breaking celery. Another gripe I have is when Mother Gooseberry drills the character's hand and he only screams in pain for a few seconds. If this happened in real life, there would be more pain-related audio after the fact. I mean seriously, this guy's getting his hand drilled into. Maybe try adding some dialogue of the character cursing or making some type of audible fuss. I really wish they implement these kinds of audio details to fully immerse the player. I can already imagine this game is going to be 70 or 80 dollars, so I want the sound design to be at its very best. The lighting looks fantastic, but as I mentioned in the overview of the gameplay, it did get a little buggy in some areas. I really hope they fix this because it sticks out like a sore thumb and disillusions me. However, this is only a small gripe which is honestly microscopic. Everything else looks outstanding. Same thing for the enemies. Overall, I love how the enemies look and how they act. In some cases, they can be a bit obnoxious, sort of like the psychosis entity, but other than that, I don't really have any complaints. The last thing I would like to talk about is the multiplayer function. I like it, but there are some problems that I noticed. If you look at another player, it looks like they're walking or running on ice. They are pretty much ice skating wherever they go. I know there are limitations when it comes to implementing multiplayer features in video games, but this really takes me out of the gaming experience when every online character is having fun in the ice rink. Maybe it's the fact that this is supposed to be a horror game. Maybe that's why it's bothering me so much. Anyway, I just hope they fix this if they get around to it. One thing I absolutely love though is when there are lobbies of people walking around. It definitely adds to the you are a Murkoff guinea pig vibe. I also like the live chat feature. That's gonna be fun to mess around with. However, I hope there's an option to mute everybody in the game. If I just want to enjoy the ambience, it's gonna be a little tough if I have to constantly listen to people bantering and whatnot. Despite my little grievances, I'm extremely excited to play the alpha game. I've been waiting for this game for basically three years, and I can't wait to finally deep search into the gruesome past of Murkoff. Perhaps we'll see or hear Rudolf Wernicke at some point, if you know what I mean. Maybe we'll learn about the morphogenic engine and how Murkoff planned to use it. There are a bunch of possibilities I'm super excited about. To give a little warning, I'm going to be a little busy as usual because my real life is increasingly getting more complex, no doubt because I'm an actual adult now. I'll try to make as many videos as I possibly can, but bear with me. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.